Greetings all and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. Today I'm bringing you a breakdown on the Anmonic RG40XXV and why you may want to take a look at it. Now I know, I know, when I first heard about it, I also thought not another Anmonic device. It's going to have the same internals as many of the other devices, going to perform exactly the same. But when I did the research on it, I was actually quite surprised and it changed my opinion of the device. So watch on to find out why. As always, please note this video is based on research and reviews from various sources, not my hands-on experience. It's intended to provide you with a detailed overview of the device that is jam-packed with little-known facts from various experiences. If you find some value from this, don't forget to like, sub, and share as it really helps the channel out and I genuinely appreciate it immensely. With that said, here is a quick breakdown of the specs for those who want to know what they are. I'm not going to go too in depth here as it is basically the same as many of the other devices in the 35XX range, with the obvious difference of the screen being larger. Feel free to pause and look through in your own time though. What I really want to get to is ergonomics and design, as this is where it truly shines. Reviewers consistently praise its premium feel despite being made of plastic. The device strikes a balance between modern aesthetics and retro charm, and I really love the sleek and clean look of the white with the rainbow colored RGB. Compared to its predecessor, the RG351V, the 40XXV manages to fit a larger 4-inch screen into a similar form factor by significantly reducing bezels. This upgrade provides a more immersive gaming experience without sacrificing portability too much. The device is also notably thinner than the RG351V, adding to its portability. When compared to the RG35XX+, the RG40XXV offers a larger screen. However, it's bulkier than the 35XX Plus, so keep that in mind. The larger size is not necessarily bad though, as many users of the 35XX line complain that they are too cramped. The 40XXV provides relief for those who have this qualm, as it has more room for comfy handling. Moving on, the controls have received particular attention from reviewers. The D-pad is consistently praised as one of Anbenik's best, offering excellent range of movement and a defined pivot. This makes it ideal for fighting games and other titles requiring precise inputs like Contra. The face buttons are reported to be smooth with good tactile feedback. The single analog stick, while functional, has received mixed reviews. Some appreciate its Nintendo Switch Joy-Con-like feel, while others note its tendency to snap to cardinal directions, which can affect precision in games. One design flaw that is unfortunately mentioned by multiple reviewers are the shoulder button sensitivity. They are apparently too easy to press accidentally which can be frustrating during gameplay. However, Zoo over at Retro Handouts has demonstrated an easy fix if you have the nerve to try it. I'll leave a link to his video in the description for those of you that want to try. Performance wise, the 40XXV is largely in line with other H700 based devices from Anbody. It has particularly strong performance for 8-bit, 16-bit and PlayStation 1 games. Nintendo 64 and Dreamcast emulation is generally good, though not perfect. Most games are playable, but some may experience occasional slowdowns or graphical issues. PSP emulation is possible but represents the upper limit of the device's capabilities, with only lighter games running smoothly. Heavier games may require tweaks like Frameskip to get it running at acceptable rates. The stock operating system has received praise for its improvements over previous Anmonic firmware. It offers a user-friendly interface, pre-configured bezels and shaders for various systems, and easy access to RetroArch settings. For those who prefer to tinker, custom firmware options like MenUI and Nuli are already available, offering additional features and potentially improved performance. Battery life is reported to be solid, with most reviewers achieving 6-8 to eight hours of gameplay on a single charge. The device also features an improved sleep mode that minimizes battery drain when not in use, though this needs to be manually enabled in the app section. With this on, you will reportedly only lose roughly 1% battery for every 2 hours the device is in this state. To sum up then, let's look at some pros and cons to help you decide whether or not the device would be worth buying. Firstly, the 40XXV has excellent build quality and a premium feel. It has a larger, vibrant 4-inch screen with minimal bezels. It has comfortable ergonomics for extended play sessions, an outstanding D-pad perfect for retro gaming, improved stock firmware with useful features, and competitive pricing. On the downside, the sensitive shoulder buttons are prone to accidental presses. The single analog stick may limit gameplay for some titles. The cardinal snapping on the stick can affect precision. 
It also has limited performance for more demanding systems like PSP, and it may feel redundant for those who already own similar Anbenic devices. In conclusion, the 40XXV offers a compelling package for retro gaming enthusiasts, particularly those drawn to the vertical form factors. While it may not be a revolutionary device, it does refine and improve on Ambonix's previous offerings, making it an attractive option for both newcomers and those looking to upgrade from older models possibly. If you want some more detail on some of Ambonix's other units, feel free to click on the links on screen now for my overview on the RG35XX Plus and the RG35XX SP. That's it for this one though. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next tech update.